we could sit in front of this thing and let a whole day pass. Uh-huh. Yo, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you are now about to witness the journey that is the Life Choices Podcast. Yeah! I was watching a show for nine hours yesterday. Okay. Uh, it's a new show out that I think a lot of people have seen on Showtime, but we saw it on Netflix called uh, Your Honor. Have you heard of it? Now, you remember Malcolm in the Middle? It just gets more and more creepy. Oh, does it really? Okay. Seriously. Yeah. It just gets more and more creepy about you. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because I saw the title of the show. Yeah. And couldn't stop watching it. I've gotten to the point where even though I sit there and watch sometimes shows, like I binge watch shows, I kind of like don't see the point of it anymore because it's like, you know exactly what's going to happen. Like Uh you might not know the exact words that the the person that wrote it is going to use, but every one hour episode, you know what's going to happen. You know there's going to be a twist you know there's going to be a moment of oh my god are they going to get through it and then there's going to be a moment of oh yeah they did it and then right. it's going to end off with a situation where you're just like oh fuck i gotta watch next week's right which is like right now because now we can do actually do it back to back instead of waiting every week and i'm laying there and i'm like why the fuck do i even bother laying here watching this stuff right because we know exactly what's going to happen but we're allowing ourselves to sit there and be literally drained of our energy to just kind of pass the time for a few hours. Yesterday was a kind of like do nothing day, which uh-huh. happens. And the whole time I'm sitting there, like it literally was nine hours. We watched nine straight episodes, obviously stopped, went, grab lunch, right? Boom, right. stop, you know, grab dinner. But like you nourished your body from all the draining. Yeah. But then we just laid there and like it, it kind of had me thinking like, why, why is it that we allow these things to happen. There's a part of my brain that works on its own Mm -hmm. and kind of talks to me. I'm not crazy, just saying. But while you were saying it, it's the first time I've ever heard it. It's like, it's a drug. I just don't think the powers that be really understood mankind. But what I realize is, is the more information they can get, who is they, Mm -hmm. is, is the more product that they can build and put together. Like, could you imagine sitting, watching television for nine hours 20 years ago? I mean, I wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Like, Mom and dad would be like, go outside. So you, re- you really went back. You're like, I wouldn't even be allowed. But let's just say you were, mm-hmm. right? It, it's crazy now that, that we could sit in front of this thing and let a whole day pass. That, that takes our emotions up, down, up, down. Some shows don't even take you up. They just take you down. down. Yeah. And then you're triggered. And now you're yelling at your significant other and don't understand why. And, and to be completely honest, uh, have you sit there and absorb nothing. But even a step further, right? So that show specifically, right? That show, what it did to me was, don't get me wrong, I was up and down, but what it did to me and other shows like it in in shows and TV in general, I walk away so opinionated. I walk away and just say, I hate all judges. (laughs) No, I'm serious. I I walk away and just say, like, I don't like this person or or, I don't like that profession because it, it makes you... Say to yourself, well, if it's happening on TV, I know it's happening downtown West Palm Beach in the courthouse. Well, in a way, that's kind of the way we we're being told that that's what's done is they allow it to slowly, little by little, come into our mainstream to the right. point where it's so normalized that it's okay. Slowly but surely. And it's so funny because the comment I had with my roommate um, when we drove to get uh, the dinner was... You remember in the 90s, and he actually brought it up even better. He said, uh, do you remember the movie Psycho? This is like way back. Way back, way, way back. back okay, right? okay. So when Psycho came out, like you didn't actually see anything. You would see like a shadow with the knife, and then you would just see like blood splattered right. over the curtain. And like you got the idea. 
Like any human being watching that would understand someone got cut. Like that was the gore. That was it. That's what you saw. Now look where we're at. Where let's say in that show in the one episode in the first season where uh, they're at the dock and the the bad guy shoots the other guy that was blackmailing the judge and put him on the boat and took him out. Right. Well, there's a scene on the boat where the guy's been shot. In, in the head, but now he's the body's on the boat upside down, so you see the back of his head, and you literally see the the like the the skull like opened as it would if right. a bullet went through. Totally normal to us now, right? But 1990, when we were younger, watching movies like Sure Kill Bill and stuff like that, you right, you right, got right. a little bit of it, but now they they've built it so little by little every year, every decade, to the point now that it's so normalized that it's completely okay to Doesn't see. Doesn't even bother you. Doesn't even bother you. At all. And, and, and again, it's this existential kind of train of thought that like I've been having in the past month where it's like, why is that okay? Why, why have we gotten to a point that we're allowed to be completely fine with seeing those sort of things? Like there, there's no, there's almost nothing that you've not, scene it's like the movie soul remember the movie soul oh you gotta watch it it's a it's a it's a cartoon but imagine if they says okay what 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 will make him do what we want him to do that's my whole point right okay let's remove compassion bam and how do we move compassion well we got to study we got to figure and and then they slowly but surely the whole concept the whole ideology of it is to remove compassion. But you don't really understand or realize it that every time you watch something, you're losing compassion a little bit by little for bit. mankind. All of my practices and everything that I do on a daily basis is the reason why, you know, I purchased all these books because I wanted the knowledge. The, the, they, them, whoever, you know, right. th- they are, in my opinion, studying me because my actions are... Uh, desiring to receive the information in which I am now starting to have a belief system that it is possible. If I do this, this, and this, I'm going to get that. I literally am receiving all of that information, right? right? Because new stuff is coming by by my means of social media or people that sit in that chair, they'll bring up someone or something that they came across like, oh, you should check out this person or you should check out oh, this person's page or, oh, this guy talks a lot about this. And so then I gather that information. So then I'm like, I'm acting or reacting that I could possibly get the benefits of what I want. Right. So therefore I'm receiving this information of all these other people and I'm reading their stuff and something that really grabs me like, oh, I'm going to put that into a practice. Oh, I'm going to start saying that. What is the bigger picture? We don't know. What is the bigger picture? We don't understand. We right. can think these things, right? And, and maybe once we decide to go down a certain path, we are choosing to some level to create our own reality. And therefore, we're researching and, and gathering information and watching programs or reading books that we want. But we're also being given this stuff, right? Correct. Because we get more of it the more we stay on it. The more we mm-hmm. read it, the more we mm-hmm. spend time on it, it comes more, right? right? Are we actually creating what we want or are we being created? I think we're creating. Mm-hmm. ing. I don't think we're creating in a sense of I'm going to make that. I, I think my is it's created and now you're creating walking on that it's past I, that's how i, I get it's it, out man. there already yeah but you're creating your process to get you to what's yeah. already there yeah okay i like, can, i believe there's an ending is there i believe there's an ending to it i can why, take, why do you believe there's an ending it's a very interesting point you just made because i believe there was a beginning i mean i can understand yeah. your point of view my point of view is the fact that energy never stops or starts. Right. Right. So if your energy doesn't start or stop, how, how can we have an ending? Like in the physical aspect, yes. Right. As far as we know, as our time on this rock, right. we have witnessed that when someone physically dies, Correct. they're gone. Correct. But I believe that their energy is still around. Like I can still sense my father from time to time. Right. I still dream very vividly and can feel like his touch, right? Right. If that's nothing less or more than energy, then it hasn't stopped. Therefore, did he end? That's the paradox. Listening to you, what you, what I got from what you said was, is you're trying to do something. 
in order to do something, you have to do something. Mentally and physically. Yeah. Agreed. If you don't do anything, what do you get? You get nothing. You get you get a day of just laying there watching nine hours. Of nine TV hours. Show. <laughs> Netflix. Full circle right there. Right. That That's my whole point. And, 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 and the reason why I'm questioning things or, or making statements right now uh, is not because I'm not believing in my faiths or my ideologies or my new practices. I believe that everybody who is on a path sometimes is going to question their own path. Right. And it's healthy to question it. It's, it's important to talk about it with people so you can bounce those ideas off of someone else that's intellectual at the level in which you believe you are. Right. Because that, that's, where, that's where the conversations continue. And I'm not disavowing my journey for the past three years that has got me here. I'm just really diving more into it and right. I'm leaning more into my things, but right. realizing that there's still this other possibility because I don't want to think just one way. Right. I want to, I want to keep my mind open to all possibilities, but still knowing that this, this is where I'm heading. I'm going this way, right. but I want to share that with people so that if they themselves are at the beginning of their journey of having conversations like this within their own circles, that it's okay to have the contradictory thought Right. Because that is what's going to make you dive more into finding out the information on whether or not this is good for you. Well, it's like anything else. I, I went to the doctor the other day, um, just normal routine. Um, so they wanted to do an echo because they heard like a murmur, but I've had it ever since I was a kid. And when she started talking about the heart, here it is, this organ that lives inside of me, which keeps me alive. I learned I know nothing about it. Like she's saying all of these things and what it does and it was 30 minutes of me just in awe of her talking about something that everybody has. But very few people bother but to learn about it. Very few people learn about it. It's so interesting because um, I was just recently away for three weeks. I did not listen to my own advice when traveling, and I was brushing my teeth with, uh, with my girlfriend's uh, tap water in okay. Thailand. And, and you just shouldn't do that as a, as a foreigner. And of course, I got a bit of a belly ache for the first like five, six days. Luckily, she's a doctor. So, you know, we got medicine and everything like that. And I was fine after about five days. But then I'm like, dude, like everything is affected by everything with inside of our there body, you go. right? The one thing I've always had a battle with my entire life since I was a teenager is my gut, my stomach, right? What's really going on in there? Like, we don't know. M most of us have no fucking clue, right? No. We, we, we just live through our life and like, blah, blah, blah. I've gotten to the point now where it's, it's, it's on my to-do list where I need to do more research on gut health because I've had problems with my gut. And that is a direct correlation, I believe, from the little information I've done so far with your brain. Absolutely. And if your gut's healthy, your brain can be healthier. So then if, you're, if your brain's healthier, then your body's healthier. Right. So it's kind of like, well, which one do you need to be healthy first? But obviously it's, it's the whole temple of the being that needs to be so, on a good level. So think about this. I don't mean to cut you. Yeah. This all ties together, right? So I'm listening to you and you're saying, hey, I'm starting to go over here. I'm starting to go dive deep into this, right? At the same time, you're talking about your health, your gut. So imagine if we were to put all mind body, soul, at its optimal capacity of being great or healthy. Could you imagine? That, that's what I'm aiming for because there's not many people in their youth kind of come to this revelation. None. It, it, it's always later on in your life. And right. I want to say usually 40 plus is, is kind of like the realm of where you start thinking, okay, well, I want to be around a lot longer. I've already gotten 40 years under my belt. I'd love another 50, right? Right. Because like, it's not unheard of to get to, to 90 now. My aunt's 106. Yeah. So it's, it's, like, it's, it's not like our parents, our children, and their parents only live to like 70, right? We have that possibility, but it's like, well, how do I get there? What do I have to do? What do I need to get done? And it's a level of consciousness that you have to have. Right. Awareness of your surroundings, your environment, your physicality, your spirituality, all of it encompassing together. But what most people don't realize is it really comes down to one thing, your body, right? This, this, this capsule that we have our energy in right. is as much as I know what we're trying to physically hold onto until our energy is ready to move on to whatever is next. Right whether it's a second chance on this planet or in a different realm or in a different uh, universe or metaverse or whatever. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. 
all I've known is planet earth. And all I've known for 46 years is this physical being right. and everything that it's encountered and, and, and been around. So now I'm like, okay, well, I would love 50 more years. I would love 50 more years of greatness. And when I say greatness, I don't mean 10 Ferraris and, and then yeah. 29 bedroom right, house. Right, right, I mean, right. greatness as in like, I love being healthy, like the calm and cold. I rather go without, right. You know, I rather live my life in the exact same image as what we call God, which is like light and love. Like I just want to be no bones hurting, no stomach aches. No I think headaches. I said that the last time when we were talking, yes. I said, if I had like one wish, you're hundred percent right. If I only had one, I would use it and say, just give me optimal health. health. Because now I get it. I understand how important it is. And I love how you're talking about the whole, you said capsule. I love that. I, I, I love how you're describing it because, you know, when you think about it, being chefs, what do we put in the capsule? I'm going to show you this dude that I just started following on TikTok. Uh, you'll love him. Yeah, his food is inspiring me to to eat eat better and eat healthier. Um, and again, it's the information that I'm now choosing to absorb and, and to receive because I want more life without aches, pains, and ill health. And I've actually added that to my my daily practices. I have like three affirmations I'll share with you after that. I say every morning, and I try very hard to say it before bed uh, about healthiness right. to some it might sound a little weird a little crazy a little woo, but i don't give a fuck i do think this is nothing more than a capsule whatever the skin the bone is i feel a much I, I feel like i'm becoming more aligned with my mental my physical and my inner spiritual being right but i do feel that there's a large separation because i i can't imagine that what this is is all that there is right i just can't believe that right it's right, not right. in my realm of, of ide ideologies. You know, you say capsule, you know, when you speak of Christianity, you know, I'm a Christian, it's, it's called temple. What do you allow in? What do you allow out? How do you treat it? As I'm getting older, 46, mm. I'm really starting to appreciate this, this body of mine, this capsule. I'm, I'm really starting to, you said when I walked in, did you lose some weight? I mean, I noticed it right at the door. Four days a week, five miles. Walking? Walking. Perfect. Four days a week, five miles. And, and it was simply a matter of saying, you say you want to live longer, but do you? It doesn't guarantee that I'm going to live longer, but I said I want to. So what am I doing? Where's the action? Where's the action behind it? Am, am I going to continuously just, you know, eat whatever I want to eat? Or am I going to eat what my body needs? And that's where the information that I'm trying to gather now, right? It's about information. So whatever information that anyone has on you or you on yourself, that's the answer. That's the control, I believe. So that's how we can sit for nine hours and watch because the study of, they like twisted stuff and only make it 34 minutes. Because study has showed us and taught us that if it's, if it's 45 minutes, they will tune out in the last 15. And they won't go back to the show. But 30 minutes gets them on their toes. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like anyone that studies movies knows the construct of what it is, where to put. There's always the love interest. There's always the female. There's always the, the drama, the action. Like, and you're 100% right. And that's what I was getting annoyed with while I was sitting there doing absolutely nothing. I wasn't even smoking weed. Right. I was literally just <laughs> laying there. I was laying there for nine fucking hours doing Sober nothing. Sober moment. Yeah. And I'm just like, dude, like I know that they know how to keep me in this chair. Right. Like it's just up and down, up and down. Like, oh, excited. Well, uh, uh, but my life would be fine if I didn't watch that. My life would be better if I chose to put something on that would actually give me the information that would allow me to, right. to, to heal whatever may be going on in my body. Yeah. But I chose not to. Yeah. Right. And with my buddy, we're watching TV. It's chill. I've been away for a month. I want to spend quality time with my boy. You know, it, it's very interesting, but it's, it's, it's crazy. It is. It's, it's a mind fuck because you know what you want to do. You know what you're supposed to do, but getting yourself to the point of doing the action 
is difficult. You know, one movie, since you said show, I'm going to say a movie. Mm-hmm. You know, one movie that I've never completely watched yet, but I feel like my body is saying, watch it. The Matrix. Oh, dude. I fucking love that you listen, said that. Listen. You haven't watched any of them? I feel like I struggle. Mm. I struggle to watch it. But but my mind is saying, pay attention. I'd say watch all of them and then walk away. Wait a month and go back and watch, watch it, it again. again. 100%. So I watched them all when they first came out. They were, they were the, obviously very big when they came out. And then I just recently watched uh, Reloaded, I think it's called. It's okay. like the newest one. Right, right, right. Um, it's weird to say it because it's become such a verb, if I'm using that right, the matrix. Like we all say like, oh yeah, living in it. It's your matrix, my matrix. So it's right. just the matrix. And it's so interesting how someone had wrote that story. It hit so many people on such a level that some people went all the way onto it, right? And that's kind of like, for me, when I watch it, I really do open my brain to the possibilities. And it's so funny because... I remember this thought when I was a child in the car with my brothers. I couldn't be five to 10 years old, right? And I'm dri- we're driving around. You're playing punch buggy in the car. You're on the highway. And I often had this thought that like God was like this person, because I don't know why, I just assume right. person. And we were just all those little army plastic figurines that he was just playing with. How fucked up is that, that I was thinking that? And then a movie like The Matrix comes out, and then I'm like, that's kind of on the same idea as what I was thinking when I was like, let's say seven years old was what, what if we are just in a simulation, each one of us is in our own simulation. Like right now I'm in your story as much as you're in my story. Right. So, so what happens if this is all just a simulation and we've chosen to do what we're doing, but we're more on the side of like, we don't kind of want, normal life, Monday to Friday, nine to five, white picket fence. We want something a bit more fun, creative, tangible. So why not? Oh, maybe it is all full of shit. And maybe there is something else if we get unplugged or plugged back in. Uh, which one? Which, which one? one is it? Right? Red pill, red pill, green pill. Like you don't fucking know. Right. Right. And, and, and think about I'm this. I'm going with plug back in. Plug back in. Yeah. Into what reality? Yeah. Right into what matrix, into what universe are you in? Like I right. never, I never questioned doing acid. I just did it. Never questioned doing ecstasy. I just did it. Right. I wasn't worried about what was going to happen. I was excited about what might right. happen. So it's interesting that you bring up the matrix because it's recently come back into my realm of life where I've watched them again. The aspect of is this all full of shit? Is there something else? And would you be okay with it? Because they're showing you that if there is. It's not exactly what you're thinking, rainbows and butterflies. Right. It's it's you're eating slop. You're not eating steak. You're not eating fish. You're not eating mango chutney. You're 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 just eating pureed shit. You know what I'm saying? Like right. the, because this is where the color is. This is where the flavor is, right? But if you don't want to be controlled by this, being unplugged, right, is not having all the bright lights and flavors. I have a feeling um, to all my life choices, followers and fans, I have a feeling that this show is going to end up somewhere in a sycamore tree. (laughs) And I think he's going to go buy like 40 acres with banana trees. Well, it is. It is actually. and, (laughs) And all the guests will have to travel to this remote place and take like some donkeys to get to the show. I feel that's where we're going. But you know how crazy this is that you're just saying? Because uh, by February 2026, right. I will be living full time in Thailand. Listen, I'm, what did I say? And then the podcast, unless someone is in Thailand, on the island in which I'm living, <laughs> they will be doing a Riverside or a Zoom recording of the podcast with me. That's where it's going. So that is hilarious Listen, how you just called okay, that. Okay, do you mind if I divert for a minute? Go for it. So when I walked in, I'm just like, this is getting trippy. I sent to my tattoo artist the next set that we're doing. It is a beehive with bees. <laughs> you like pain. Yeah, but I do numb cream now. Does it work? Yeah. Not on the shins. Nothing works on the shins. That's just straight up death. It fucking hurt, dude. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, <laughs> I could cry right now how much pain I was in while doing it. And then you know you can't move, right? I'm going to my back next. Good luck. I'll get you numb cream. <laughs>
this fucking spine, dude. All your nerve endings are right there on your spine. All right. You're, you're, you're going in for a level of, of discomfort, you know, which is fine because we, we, love, we love getting that done. It's great word. You just said discomfort, which takes us mm. right back to where we were. I think we have to reach a level of discomfort to get where you're going. I'm, I'm in another level. I'm at a level of discomfort in a lot of different things in my life. Uh, a big thing is me being here. And with where my life is going, like I mentioned, I'll be living full-time in Thailand by February 2026. I mean, I now know exactly where I need to be in order to accomplish all the rest that I want to in life. To reach the ultimate level. Uh, of everything. I mean, I visualize of receiving everything that I'm trying to create physically and mentally. And knowing that where I need to go, I know that I'm going to have some discomfort. Like the biggest thing is I'm going to... I'm going to, and, and again, it's happening slowly because it's 2024 right. summertime, right? So, and I'm saying February, 2026, which is a year and a half from now. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting my brain ready for something uh, very drastic, which is changing my entire life and, and living on the other side of the world for so many very good reasons. But there's a, there's a lot of discomfort that I know is coming my way because something so huge so great is going to happen for me and to me right. that I know that discomfort has to happen first in order to get there. Oh, which is so you couldn't have said that better. It's it's so wel welcoming. Like I'm so ready to receive all that I have to go through in order to get to that next level. I'm thinking it's like you know what experience are you really going to have? What energies? Well, that's what I'm saying. What like, alignments, dude? It's way better over there for me. Like, I, I can't even express, like, uh, 2016, when I took my big trip around the world, the, the, the two biggest uh, contributing factors for the person I became was the month I spent in Bali, and the direct after that month was a month in Thailand. And, and those two months, those 60 days, changed my life forever. Not, not just because of the fun I had, but because of the person I became. And now that I just had a month there uh, in a different fashion, because the first time I was single, I was having fun, I was doing everything that uh, you could possibly do uh, in those countries. And this time was, you know, I was going to, to see my girlfriend and, you know, that is just like on a whole other level now with right. like where my life is going. But every single moment I was managing to be as present as one can be. Aware. Yeah, of everything that was going on around me, not just the happiness that I had being with someone that, that appreciated me, but where I was, what I was seeing, how I was walking, how I was talking, how I was being, who I was, like just everything, like my entire being is just elevated in a way that is hard to understand unless you see me as soon as I get back. And you're seeing me like a week, uh, almost a week after. I unplug when I'm over there. But yet I'm working the whole time. Like you have no idea what's happening in the world. No, I mean, I have no idea what's happening in the world regardless, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, I choose not to. No, I literally, I don't watch news. I don't watch regular TV. I don't scroll on anything that's going on in the world that it I literally does not affect my life whatsoever. I live my life uh, day to day, I guess you could say, in the energies that I choose to. When I'm over there, even though I'm actually working more there than I am here, right. like realistically, physically, I'm doing more work on a daily basis there than I am here. I'm enjoying myself more over there than I am here. And I'm in a surrounding where I'm literally in a jungle, even in a town that I'm in, right? Because if I'm on an island in a town, I'm still, I'm, I'm on an island. Right. The island is a jungle. It's just been like taken down in areas and built villas and cottages. It's basically like going to camp, right? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just cottages everywhere. And you just stay in these cottages. I'm very free when I'm there. Like as much as I can. What I'm wearing right now is basically like I have like six of these shirts. And I don't even wear these, these, these shorts. I'm, I'm wearing boardies. Like I'm just wearing my board shorts every day. Like even to just go out for lunch. It's just board shorts and this. And then I have like my little, like, you know, those camelbacks. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. have that with like my gimbal and my mic and my cell phone and all the attachments. Like, boom, let's go. That's all you need. That is it. And, and I couldn't be happier there. I need to go. And that's the whole thing about the matrix is the unplugging of it. Like, um, I don't like when people say and use the excuse of, oh, I don't have money. Oh, I can't do, I must be nice to be able to go on a vacation like that. It's like, okay, well, I've spent 16 years in an industry that pays quite well because I've, I've, I've given up a lot of my life and I don't see my nieces and nephews and uh, my oldest nephew who's 17 has seen me maybe eight times. So yeah, it must be nice. I, I fucking, 
Right. I, I gave up some shit in order right, to get right. to You don't want to give up anything. Exactly. So that's why you're eating what yeah. you eat. And that's why you live where you live. Because you're not willing to give up anything to get what you need. And, and we need to be outside. And we need to see the world. Oh, outside. Listen to this. Back to my doctor. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, I went to the heart doctor. Yeah. I'm sitting on the table. She's talking to me about no shoes. Dude. Listen to me. Continue. Listen to me. This is my heart doctor. And, and the way she described them, she didn't even call them shoes. She said those rubber things. Yep. They're horrible. But what you're saying about like the doctor saying like those rubber things, like you and I, when we were kids, we ran around our front yard with no shoes on. Yeah. We walked on the pavement. When I, yeah. was, when I was at camp, I would go from, the, from the, the cabin to the mess hall in bare feet, running down like the graveled road, hop on the grass, back on the gravel road. Like It didn't seem to hurt us as much as it does now because we have stopped doing it. We don't climb trees anymore. We don't, this, people will look at it and think it's fucking stupid, but when was the last time you were barefoot, went up and hugged a fucking tree? I'm going to do it today. Do it. And I tell you, I, I like really hold on to that and really think about what you're doing. It's called grounding for a reason. There is so much energy that comes through the planet and we are, no one can deny the fact that we are not built of energy. Like we are, that's what we are. Yeah. And so then if you can reconnect with the main source of energy that you live on, you need, you need to be outside. You need sunlight. What is sunlight? Energy coming into you, right? You need that energy yeah. to, to be alive, right? Go fucking hug a tree, barefoot, or, or just go to the beach. Because oh, even though we all live here, place. even though we all live here, we don't go enough. Oh. Go to the beach and stand there with your feet, like not just on the beach, but get to the watery part and like get, get your, like dig your feet into the sand. Dig in. It will, that's my biggest message right now. And that's why I'm saying over there, I'm just like a fucking child. I'm like a 10 year old, so excited with every single thing that I'm doing. You put me in a jungle, you let me go for a hike to go see a waterfall. I don't need anything else in my life. Nothing. So next I'm going to come back on this show and tell you. When I say people use excuses, like I don't have enough money. It's like figure out. If you're always saying, oh, it must be nice for that person to go there or do this or whatever, look at what they're doing, right? Figure out what it is. Figure out how much it is. Step further. Break it down into like a daily cost. And I guarantee you what you spend your money on on a daily basis, like the 10 bucks you spend at Starbucks every single day, you might only need to find another 10 bucks a day and in six months have enough money to go on this little trip that you want to do that you're so envious step that someone further, else is further. Step further. Ask them. Oh, Yeah. People like me would be more than happy to just tell ask. You. Yeah. How do you do it? Don't assume you can't do it. How do you do it? Give me the steps. People need to go and see the world. Every time I come here, I just say to myself, I leave thinking, I leave inspired, motivated, and more importantly, I, I leave with something. That's why I love coming on Life Choices. I leave with something and it's free. It's free. Thank you. Except it's for parking. Free. It's free. <laughs> Except for parking. It's like five bucks. It's just so much fun. And I love sharing. And I really needed to share today. Thank you for coming out again. I do that. I appreciate Man, that. Means- that. This always. Yeah. Always. For, for everyone out, out there, again, thank you very much for coming by. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on the Life Choices Podcast. Play, 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 so, play, much love. Gentlemen. You are now about the journey. Life, 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 life Choices podcast.